Sunday, August 7th, 1864. At 9 a.m., still in camp, nearly used up. We are beginning to think of leaving a body for home unless we are better used. Hundreds of our men have died from overexertion. Heat and sunstroke. It is too bad. No enemy in sight or army were about that we know of. I feel the spring of youth fast flowing from these weary limbs. My old body cannot stand this much longer. I am giving out in lungs and vital parts. Soon, this pilgrimage will end with me if I stay here. Whatever comes, I will try not to disgrace the flag of my country by cowardice or neglect of duty. While I'm in the service, I will be true to it. Even though I die. Yours truly, Surgeon Holt. Hi, welcome to Star Wars Musings. I'm Mr. Dyer, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Hathaway Patent Writing Kit. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you like this video, make sure to click like. Please consider subscribing. I got a ton of videos about Civil War and early 20th century campcraft videos. So please check those out after this one. Now, if you're new to my channel, we take a look at artifacts. Now, I try to get original artifacts, or really good uh, reproductions. This is one of those really good reproductions. In fact, as far as I know, it's the only uh, reproduction kit out there of the Hathaway writing kit. It's made by N.J. Sekela, or Sekela. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. But I've had this for a while. Um, it's really well done. If you compare it to an original, which I've had the opportunity to do, it's dead on as far as the length, the thickness of slats, everything. It's a beautiful piece. And I, I love having it, and it really is an amazing piece of kit to have. If you're an officer or if you are enlisted, uh, just realize that this is going to be kind of a premium item for your kit. They weren't extremely common. It's not like every soldier had one, but they're common enough that they find their way on eBay on a regular basis. So that tells you that they're not super rare. So if we take a look at the patent writing kit, it has the wooden slats and it has two brass pieces here. And that's what's going to connect this slat that turns and locks in place. So you have a flat writing surface. Let's take a moment. I'm going to reposition the camera so you can see how this is all uh, done up close. So if you were to buy this from NJ Sekela, it's not going to come with this ruler. This is a handmade ruler that I've made myself. It's not going to come with paper. It's not going to come with an eraser, a pencil, or a pen, so we're going to put those off to the side. What it is going to come with is this inkwell in the case itself. So as you can see, it has your main writing surface that rolls up with the slats. Inside it has a portfolio, so that's where you can store your papers and keep them separate from the ink so that they don't get damaged. And it has this metal tin tube, and it has your ink well. Now as you unroll it to employ that slat that turns on a pivot, you're going to 
just turn it and it locks into place giving you a nice rigid flat surface. Now this inkwell is also really unique. If you were to unscrew it, it has a leather gasket up top to keep the ink from spilling out. And it has the hole where your, your pen nib can go into and it has a hole on top. As you screw it, it gets tighter, but that, that snaps into place and that gasket is what keeps the ink from coming out. Now this was patented in 1861. This was patented in 1862. So the inkwell is 1862, the kit itself was 1861. And it's kind of interesting, the story on it, if you were to look it up. Uh, NJ Sekula has got uh, the complete history on his website for you to peruse. I'm just gonna give you a quick and dirty about it. And I'm gonna read this handbill that's attached to the kit itself. Hathaway's portable writing case, designed for army use. This is a neat, compact, and useful article so constructed as to combine both the portfolio and desk. A small metal case contains ink stand, pens, pencils, envelopes, etc. Attached to this is a portfolio for note paper and letters, and connected with the whole is a light yet strong hinge table or writing board, which can be held in the hand and used in any position, either standing, sitting, or on horseback, and for furnishes a hard and smooth surface for writing, always at hand and easily used. The hole forms a roll of nine inches long and two and a quarter inches in diameter, and when filled with stationery, weighs only 13 ounces and can be carried in the knapsack. Manufactured especially and sold by John M. Whitmore & Co. Stationers and account book manufacturers, 114 Washington Street in Boston. And it has nice uh, logo on it. You can see a picture of a soldier using it and writing it on it. Now this was a, a really important because nothing brings a soldier joy closer to home than a letter. So this may seem kind of trivial, but for a soldier, this is their one connection to their loved ones at home and to get news. Uh, if you've ever been in that position, you can certainly relate. Uh, they didn't have cell phones back then all they had was the written word and it took you know sometimes a couple weeks up to a month or more to get a letter sent back from home so it's a very valuable piece of kit now the story behind the writing kit itself the uh the gentleman who designed it got a lot of uh influence because of their father now the father was a businessman, he was uh, politically connected, and that's why in uh, Mr. Sakela's uh, research and the handbill that he has, it sp specifically talks about it being promoted by general officers. So now that we have that, let's take a look at the other contents that I put to fill this out. First thing you're gonna need is paper. Now, the type of paper that we have today is not the same paper that they had back then. Uh, you'd want to use a cotton rag paper, to be historically correct, not the paper for the, the wood pulp paper that's so common that we use for printing. Uh, cedar pencils. Pencils were probably more common at that time than just the ink and the, uh, the pens. Nibs were pretty expensive back then. In fact, even in the medical um, request books, they suggest that you uh, don't request the, the metal nibs because of the cost. You'd want to go with the cedar pencils. And you'd want to get a rubber eraser. They did have the erasers back then, just like we do today. Now a lot of people misidentify this as a fleam or a medical instrument. What this is is actually an ink eraser. So once you write on a piece of paper, you can use this. And because it is cotton rag, you scrape at it and it erases your mistake when written in ink. And you would want a ruler. Now, as an officer especially, if you have to make up forms, uh, rulers are pretty necessary to make sure you got a nice straight edge. I made this one, manufactured it. You can go on eBay and find some older original ones. Um, but just to 
to get a very basic uh, 8 inch to 12 inch rule. Since my case is 9 inches, this is an 8 inch rule. And there you have it. That would fill out your case. Now the ink themselves, you would want to get a, a gall ink, which a gall or is actually a seed of a plant that's smashed up and it was uh, purchased in powder and you would put that into your ink stand, you mix it with a little bit of water, you shake it and stir it up and that creates your black ink, iron ink gall. Um, and that's, that's the writing kit. If you have any questions, please let me know. I hope that this was useful as we talked about the Hathaway writing kit. Now, as you go forward and you decide that this was just too much or maybe it doesn't fit into your persona, you can get the portable ink stands like the wooden ones from places like the Sutler or Scott. So I would suggest you go there. There's a lot of places that sell the pens, but when you get the reproduction pens, make sure that it doesn't have the broad barrel that you see so common today. What you want is a very narrow, narrow barrel and that's what's going to allow you to dip into the ink stands. Our contemporary ink stands are much bigger, they're wider for those barrels compared to historically accurate uh, pens. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. Let me know if you like writing letters at reenactments or living histories. I, I certainly do. Every reenactment I go to, I always try to write a letter to my wife, and I also try to keep a journal. It, looking back on it, now I can see going almost to the start of my living history career uh, stories of my earliest adventures and it was just a lot of fun. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you get into this aspect of the hobby and it can add to your persona and add to uh, a little bit of your knowledge. Check out the copper plate style of handwriting. Spencerian was around but honestly it didn't get uh, didn't explode in popularity until after the American Civil War, so copper plate is definitely going to be your starting point if you're trying to learn historical handwriting. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day. Give a kiss nod to your loved ones and take care.